going. Thank you for your patience. We're just a few minutes late. My name is Alice Laughlin. I'm the chair of the WSESU Act 46 Study Committee. Um, I'm going to get us going and then pass it off to the um, members of the committee who represent Brattleboro. Um, and Jill Stahl, Tyler will be doing the majority of the speaking. But let's go ahead and introduce ourselves, starting with Ian. Uh, Ian Torrey, I'm a member of the BUHS board and a member of the Act 46 Study Committee. Christina Naylor, Dumberston Town School Board and alternate member of the Act 46 Study Committee. Alice Rebus, Chairman of the Board of Gilbert and a member of the Act 46 Committee. Mark Truhan, member of the Brattleboro Town School Board, member of the Act 46 Committee. And all sorts of other things. <laughs> And I'm Jill Stahl Tyler. I'm board chair for the Brattleboro Town School Board and a member of the Act 46 study group. Uh, Kim Price, uh, member of the Brattleboro Town School Board and a member of Act 46. Ricky Davidson, chair of the BUHS School Board and a member of the Act 46 study group. Ron Staley, superintendent of schools, went from Southeast to our union. Uh, Amy Wall, Emerson School Board and a member of the Building Rep on the Study Committee and chair of the SU Board. And I'm Mike Ebert. I'm the uh, chairman of the Vernon School Board, and I represent Guilford and Vernon in the uh, in the legislature. And before Jill gets going, uh, just just to remind everyone that this is what. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Lyle Holiday, director of curriculum for Women in Southeast, expert button button pusher. <laughs> So tonight is a, uh, a legally required meeting. Each uh, There's going to be a vote on December 13th from 10 to 11 in the four towns, which you know about. Um, and we need to have an informational presentation about the vote in every town. And this is the one that is uh, obviously in Brattleboro. So Jill, take it away. So I think the first thing is what Mark was just mumbling. Where are we voting? Because it's kind of been different in Brattleboro. And can vote already. Early voting is already open. I actually already went myself. And it's in the early voting's in the town clerk's office, and then it's in the building there upstairs. Kate, is that, what's the official name? Select board meeting. Select board meeting. There we are. So that can happen on Tuesday. And the vote is whether to release the town burden from Brownville Union High School District. Um, it's kind of a long, wordy motion, but it's Yes, to let them go and know that you want to have Vernon stay. Just a quick show of hands, are you all from Brattleboro or is anybody here from another town? Everybody's Brattleboro? No, Vernon. Vernon? Vernon <laughs> Gilford, yeah. Okay. No. And Gilford, yes. Yes, you <laughs> Okay. So who's voting? It's all of us in the towns of Brattleboro, Donaldson, Guilford, and Putney. As you know, the Current Union High School is made up of all of those towns plus Vernon, so to dissolve it requires all of us to say yes, we will let Vernon go. Why are we voting? So the first thing is not on here, but to me the first reason is because Vernon asked us to. And that that's the main reason that legally we all are voting by law we have to, because Vernon has had their own vote in August and that it was sent up to the state. The state said yes, the vote was certified, it was all done correctly, and at that point, legally, we all have to vote. So then the questions become, why did Vernon ask for this? And Mike, feel free to jump in, right? Um, Vernon would like to maintain its 50-year history, more than 50 years of grade seven to 12 school choice. The reason that came up is because of the merger discussions that we've had in our discussions um, and looking at it, we were not looking at having school choice for everyone. And we tried to have school choice maintained in the merger for Vernon, but that was not allowed. So at that point, Vernon decided that the best course of action for them would be to leave the Union uh, School District in order to maintain their historical school choice. Uh, as we just said, and then they voted in August, and the second step is this vote that's required. I think I just said that too, right? 
Boy, we're gonna, I was just at another meeting and I made us rip through a meeting in 45 minutes. We normally take two hours, so I think I'm on the same vein with you guys. It says the same thing. Uh, the financial implications. This is the question that the study committee looked at very hard. Um, you know, why we did a very expensive, at the time, most expensive renovation in the state's history. And so some of us immediately said, but wait a minute, Vernon signed on to that. And if we say no, are we saying, okay, Vernon, you can say yes to a debt and then walk away. And our very capable business manager just walked in, Frank Rucker, um, assures us that pretty much it's a wash. The amount of equity that they built up, they would be losing in owning that part of the building in exchange for our relinquishing the debt that they owe us. Um, if they're allowed to leave, they would just sign <coughs> over their share and we would forgive all of their debt. And it's all worded out in a, an agreement that the folks on the high school board have already vetted and looked over and also the Vernon board and I have no idea how many lawyers have all looked at that. Well, can, I, can I speak to that and then maybe Mike could and Frank. So we, we had an attorney who works on these things quite a bit, Paul Giuliani, um, works for the bond bank in a sense. Um, so it, it was something unusual, quite frankly, uh, but we wanted to make sure that the assets in the debts, uh, it made sense in terms of this, this process. He did work it out, uh, there was an agreement, written agreement uh, that UHS reviewed along with the Vernon School District and um, made sense and, and both of those uh, boards signed off on it. And then that agreement needed to be endorsed by each of the other um, boards of the town. So I don't know if you want to speak to that or? or no, I, I, I think you move on. After I'll give a little explanation on Vernon's side. Okay. Go ahead. Push the button. So then the big question, of course, is, is part of our, our financial thoughts are will, will, will Vernon continue to be a part of our BUHS and BAMS population? And we assume so. Um, Mike is nodding his head that every indication that we've all heard from Vernon is yes. Uh, it is 80% right now. So eight out of 10 kids are coming into BAMS and BUHS from Vernon. I personally feel a little bit more comfortable in saying that'll continue when you look at over 50 years of history. Um, if it had been just a couple years, I think that might be a little bit less reliable, but it is a really long history that, that's been going on. And we would expect that to continue at a similar level and that Vernon would pay tuition, which they don't do now because of course they're part of the entire supervisor union and that's included in a different way now. So they would pay tuition and that would be a source of income coming in for the Broward Road Union High School and Bands. Vernon does lose their vote. Right now, Vernon has a voice on the Supervisor Union Board and a voice at the table in making those sorts of decisions, but they would no longer be a part of the Supervisory Union, so they would no longer have that vote. Similarly now, Marlboro sends kids and several other towns around send kids and they don't have that vote either. They're a tuitioning town and that's it. And so here's how does the vote work. If the member towns vote yes, and it is four member towns that are voting, remember, all four have to say yes, then Vernon exits the district and they pursue their own options um, for any merger that they wish to do that will attend to the concerns that they have, most namely school choice. If any one of us in the different towns, any one town's majority says no, or more than one, but if any one, it will negate it and Vernon is not allowed to withdraw. These are the polling locations, the Municipal Center for Brattleboro. And then by re requirement, we've all had our meetings and ours is the last one. Is that the end of the presentation? Haha, <laughs> I'm on a roll, moving quickly. <laughs> so I think at this point we take questions. So any questions from the public? And, well, let's let Mike speak first, sure. Okay, um, one of the questions that's come up is why Vernon's doing this? And 
Some people have said, are you dissatisfied with the supervisory union? Uh, absolutely not. Vernon is not dissatisfied with the supervisory union. We've had a great relationship, and we wish we could stay in the supervisory union. Uh, but once the ruling, the determination came that we could not maintain school choice, we thought it's in the best interest of Vernon to withdraw from the, from the UHS number six and strike out on our own. Uh, but we intend, if things go as we hope, we intend that we would be our own district, but then contract with the supervisory union to provide the services we currently have. As I said, we're, we're satisfied with what goes on with the supervisory union. It's been a great relationship, and th there's been no animosity. So, you know, it's, it's you just want to, uh, I want people to realize that we're not leaving because of a level of dissatisfaction with the supervisory union. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, it's, it's the simple fact that when we were asked to join the UHS number six, 50, 60 years ago, whenever it was, one of the things that the folks in Vernon said, we will join if we maintain school choice. Because at that time, the high school for Vernon was Mount Hermon. And they wanted to maintain it. So in the charter, we were granted school choice. And all through the negotiations or the debate on Act 46, we were assured that we would be able to maintain our school choice because we had the charter. As it turned out, that Mike, what you say during those negotiations, that wasn't our Act oh, no, no. 46. Oh, uh, no, no. In the legislature, during the process of debating Act 46. On a daily basis, I would check in with the Education Committee and ask them, where are we now? What is happening with choice? And it was pretty well maintained that Vermont, uh, Vernon was very unique in the state of Vermont because we were the only town that belonged to a high school union board and had school choice. And because of that uniqueness, we were kind of a set aside where we would not be at risk of losing school choice. As it turned out, Don Russo Savage reviewed the bill and reviewed um, the laws that pertain to school choice and, and school districts. And her determination was that two districts could not exist, coexist if one was tuitioning and one was choice. And that's where all that's where all this blew up, and we uh, okay now we have to withdraw. Um, Vernon is very hopeful that the towns will allow us out, and then um, we've worked closely with Dr. Staley in coming up with an arrangement where we could go back and then contract. The thing that would occur is we would be let out, then the merger vote would take place. And whatever the entity was after the merger vote, we would then try and draw articles of agreement with that new entity. And then the Agency of Education, uh, we would hope, hopefully would prove those articles and we could continue our relationship. Um, and I believe Dr. Cielli and our board and most everybody I talked to, there's no real reason why the Agency of Ed should say no. It, it, it meets all the criteria, so we should be able to go along. Um, and I think that's a hit on just Yeah, about I think it's um, actually the State Board of Education that would be uh, making that consideration. I mean, we've already had some conversations with board members, and they understand the issue of school choice. They understand um, the relationship that we've had as a supervisory union district with Vernon. Um, I would hope that they would uh, approve contracting services through our supervisory district if we become a supervisory district. Um, and you know, along the way, it would be great if the state board or the legislature made an exception for Vernon since they had a law in 1956 that it was actually reestablished in 2006, um, pretty recently in terms of the school choice issue. So that would be ideal that after a year or so, um, you know, they could make an exception for Vernon since it's been in our district for a long time, so. And in the legislature, we've been having conversations about how to modify Act 46, because there are a lot of unique situations throughout the state. Hopefully changes would be made, and those changes would allow us to just move forward and reapply to be back in the district. I think that would be Vernon's first choice of what to do. As I said earlier, we've been very satisfied. Uh, and that's also why 
we anticipate really no change in the number of students going to Brattleboro. We've had 75 to 80 percent of students going there for 50 years, and there is nothing that indicates that would change. So I think all in all, with the exception of the school choice, we've been pretty well satisfied with, with what goes on. We, we'd like to continue the relationship. But at, at the present time, we cannot continue that relationship and maintain the choice that we've had in our time. How, how many students are we talking about total? Uh, what do we have for students at, at the UHS? So 20% of 110? Something like that. Yeah. 110 students attend, attend the Radar Union. And right. And we have about 25 yeah. at the other places. Or something like that. Yeah. Mark, this is 160. Thank you, sir. 260 total students? No, well, 150. Based on information finding out of the uh, No, is, is that BAMS and BUHS? The high school and total BAMS? Yeah. 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 Okay. Not, not just the high school. Right. Oh, right. Seventh to twelfth grade. The answer is <laughs> yeah. the answer is at Bams and the high school, one sixteen. One fifty nine. One fifty nine. Wow. So there's yeah. so the total number of students in uh, Berman, excluding the elementary schools, somewhere in the vicinity of 190, 200 students. We have thirty plus that go other places. So that number you're referring to is K6. Oh, K6. so it's the wrong number. Yeah. Well, it's the only number I had. <laughs> yeah, great. But, <laughs> uh, Anybody else pull a number out of you? Okay, here we go. Let's, re let's roll it back. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. How many students in Vernon avail themselves of the choice? How, how many people don't go to Brattleboro School? About 20% of the student population. But how many? Five, five, uh, well, currently, actually, the population they gave is Vernon's 159 students. Okay, so that's, that's what we that's have in the elementary school. school. Well, so that's K to six. No, K six. K six. We have 159 students. Sixth grade class this year. Carrie, do you call a number? I want to say about 20. 20. So out of that class, you know, four. Four kids would go somewhere else probably. That's been the historical pattern. That's K through six. No, no, that would be out of six. When the sixth grade graduates, they we have seven through 12 school choice. So when they leave Vernon, that's when they make the choice. So at the level we have right now in sixth grade, would probably be two to four kids would go somewhere other than Brattle. And the other 16 kids would come to Brattle. And that's been the history. Uh, I think one year we got down to like 74% came to Brattleboro. Um, but we had a, a large group go down to Pioneer. And that was, just, that was an anomaly. Most of the time it's, it's about 80% go to Brattleboro. Mike, I just don't, I, so the number of. It's about 30. The number of people that don't go, that go elsewhere, elsewhere from seven to twelve. Okay, that's the number I'm looking for. So, okay. so I'm pretty sure I think Mark gave us a good point of reference. The K, the K six population is right now about 160. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know the the balance. Eventually, they'll be the high school kids, right? Yeah. They'll be the seven twelve. So you can just multiply that number by two. Yes, sir. Right? So 160. So 320 total students, right? Okay. Of which I know when we did the budget last year, we budgeted for about 50 students to uh, be paid for outside of the Union High School. Um, so 50 divided by 320 is your answer in terms of percentage. It's, um, what would that be? That would be about 18% or something like that. So 15 to 18. And of course, that's going to vary every year. Because it, it is an option by uh, the parents. So the number is about 50? The about 50 students uh, is the are not are using the school truck. Right, right, right. right. Which is, which is a, a about close to 20% of the total population that, mm -hmm. of, of the Vernon students. And, you know, and that number has fluctuated over years. When we added on to the school, at that time we had a 
student population in Vernon is somewhere around 240, 250 students. So we made the capacity of the school to be uh, 310. That's when we added on to the school. Our population got down, what was it, 126? Uh, we got down to 126, now we're back up to 159. Uh, we're one of the few communities that is actually seeing our student population rebound. And for those of us that are optimistic, after the closing of the plant, uh, the people that are going to move into town and buy the houses of the folks that are leaving, uh, my house, I'm not going anywhere, but if I were to put my house on the market, I would not anticipate that someone would come and buy my four bedroom homes, someone my age with no children. It would be a young family who would come in and buy the home. So our student population would grow even more. And the, I think what's more important is what percentage of students goes rather than a specific number, because that number fluctuates every year. That's our student population. And I have a question about the uh, who who sat down and decided we needed to have Act 46? And where are these people? And do they have children that are going to see Or where did this Act 46 come from? It's like they pulled it out. Of, well, 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 they're sitting there smoking their cigars and having a glass of wine. Well, you know, let's do something. You know, let's do something to throw a wrench in the Actually, it, it was uh, over a period of years, there's been grave concern about the cost of education and taxes and things like that. So there, there's been talk about how we can adjust that. Some of us would prefer to go back and revisit how education is funded, period, the mechanism we use. That was not done. The legislature is who came up with Act 46. For the record, I did not vote for Act 46 <laughs> um, for a multitude of reasons. One is I wanted to focus more on the financing of how we finance education than, than the new system. Um, but it was a long, drawn-out process. I would have rather taken another year to do it, but we did it in one session. Um, so yeah, it, it lays on the doorstep of the legislature. We, we, we created Act 46 and it was approved in the legislature. Again, now that it's been rolled out and some people see that in many instances one size does not fit all or communities have unique situations that should be addressed, there is a strong feeling that some adjustments need to be made. Uh, the current chair of the Ed Committee in the Senate, Senator Collins, has spoken for change to Act 46. Janet Ansel, she's the chair of Ways and Means in the House. She's called for some changes to Act 46. So there's really, it's not, it is not a partisan issue. It's really across the board how it's, it's rolled out, how it's impacts schools. So there is a, a large uh, contingent of people that are saying we want to change this. I was very relieved to hear that the idea of repeal was taken off the table because I think that would have been a lot of time spent on debate and when we should be spending that time on improving. Uh, Act 46, I think, had some laudable goals. And I think the intention, it's a well-intentioned bill, so I think tweaking it or just making some corrections would be far better than repealing it. So I think the discussion is going to be centered around uh, how we improve it and how we make it uh, more fair to different towns with different situations and, and take those into consideration. So I'll also add to that, Mike, that at the beginning, I mean, it's not like legislators just suddenly pulled out of the air, oh, let's go play with something. It, there was a, a substantive concern, and if you look at our numbers, and it's a different presentation than what we're talking about tonight, we're just talking about Vernon, but um, in our supervisor union alone, we're down 22 or 23 percent in the last 14 years in student population. And our increases in cost, who can say that off the top of their head? We're up, I don't know, 45%, I think, in the same amount of time. There's a slide we have that shows that. So, and that's, we're not alone. The entire state is seeing that sort of thing. Matter of fact, we're less of an increase than the state average in that same time frame. 
So it's a concern of how do you keep funding the education system, and it's a an attempt this law to bring um, some changes to that. And then there's a very large concern that the law is really about equity for children, and that's. In our case, we've found inequities. There's certainly larger inequities in some areas um, of the state, but that was is a very definite concern that was trying to be addressed by this law as well. Ken McCaffrey of Brattleboro. Uh, my question is uh, what was up there before that somehow the money is a wash and comes out to zero in that Vernon will no longer be paying taxes to the BUHS district, as we, the rest of us are, but that they're giving up assets. And I was wondering what those assets were. Is there like a wall somewhere that they could take out of the high school and move down to Vernon because that's their asset? But what exactly are the assets that they're giving up? So Frank can probably address that one best. So a couple things. Uh, uh, so you know, Vernon or uh, in no no school district now is paying taxes to the Union High School. So that, that was changed in 2010. Uh, it's called Act 130. Essentially, the legislature said let's let's make sure that uh, uh, voters can can see the uh, effect of uh, creating a budget. Uh, at a Union High School district, just as you can in an elementary district. So, just a kind of a point of clarification: all of the all of the towns now pay into the education fund. And the education fund then evaluates uh, spending at each public school and then sends a check. Um, so that has a very significant implication, I think, to the question that you're you're asking, which is. You know, what, where are the tax implications? It's a good question. Um, I can give you the simple answer, but you're, you, you probably would be interested in more of the detail. The simple answer is uh, that the, all public school tax rates are set by spending per student. It's a calculation of spending per student. So th what, what is at, in play here is uh, Vernon students are counted by Bradbury Union High School. And then we take uh, spending divided by Vernon students, Dummerston students, Guilford students, Putney students, Bradbury Town students. Take all of those kids, about, about a thousand kids in terms of a statistic, we divide it by the budget. In the new, in the new scenario, if we merge, uh, Vernon takes those, like, those counts to their town system. So they take that 110 kids that we were talking about. They already count those 50 kids we were talking about earlier at their town system. They're going to take those 100 kids and they're going to count them on their system. Their budget's going to go up by about 110 kids times, if they still come to the UHS, $15,000 a kid. So that'll be close to $2 million. So their budget goes up, the high school's revenues go up. So this is what's meant by essentially a wash in terms of its impact. The cost per student at, at district in Vernon stays relatively the same, and the cost per student at VHS stays relatively the same, assuming those 100 kids continue to come here. So then your other question about uh, washing an asset. So this is based on the attorney's uh, contribution to the board negotiation. So Ricky, feel free to you know add to this. But so the attorney, uh, as Ron mentioned, uh, Paul Giuliani, he's been practicing the state of Vermont for about 40 years. He's a, he's uh, primarily a bond counsel, so he deals with debt. Um, it was his analysis that. It's unrealistic that, that we're going to auction off Brattleboro Union High School and put a price tag on Dunmerston's proportional share, Vernon's proportional share. So that's just unrealistic. Just as it is uh, to ask uh, Dunmerston, Vernon, 
Putney to settle up on a proportional share of the debt. So his analysis was, on the books, the UHS says it's worth 42 million if you look at the audit report. And by the time, if this merger goes forward, uh, the debt would be still 11 million remaining. So he's, he's saying, well, if Vernon is about 10%, 15%, it depends on that enrollment statistic at any given day, and that's subject to negotiation. You can, you can take a, an equivalent value of the assets and you can take the equivalent proportion of their share of the debt and they're going to be they're going to be pretty similar and then he would go on to say and by the way who's going to sell the high school so that's that's the gist of the the guidance that we Thank you. Andy Thanks I'm Andy Davis a Broadbor resident and had a couple of questions that have been coming up a um, couple of easy ones um, we talked about the kids that are going to take, that have historically taken the choice down in Vernon. So that leaves about how many in the middle school, high school, every year, roughly about 120, 120. Depending 100. on Vernon's population, okay. I'd say about okay. 100, 110 students. So the question is, does Vernon have any role on the leadership council with that number of kids? as a contracting their children. They're like, we've had that conversation before at Act 46 meetings about, we know Vernon would lose their vote. And it's been said that uh, for the we other towns, by losing, by losing their school board, they have a role in the leadership council. Would that follow for a town that was contracting more than 100 students into the system where they would have no vote. They wouldn't have a vote or a if, voice. If they leave the supervisory union, they have no vote in the supervisory union. The leadership councils that you're referring to are at each individual school in the proposal of the merger. Um, if, if the merger goes forward, the, the leadership council would not have anything to do with Vernon. Vernon would Vernon, have their Vernon own would school. become a tuitioning town, so oh. we would be like Dover or any Your other. Your kids would town. show up the way a foreign exchange student would show up. <laughs> well, a, a, a Dover student yeah, shows well, up. But there wouldn't be a voice back in their hometown no. that there would be listened to. No. Okay. Well, that would, well, no, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. We, we discussed this uh, in Guilford the other evening. Um, one of the things and levels of satisfaction with the supervisory union is it's always been responsive. Okay. Um, so you would not have an official voice, but certainly when there are concerns raised by tuitioning towns to the SU, <coughs> Dr. Staley and his staff take those seriously, take them into consideration, and they are discussed. Uh, so yes, while we would relinquish our official capacity to have representation, we certainly would still have a voice because the SU allows that to happen. But it would be a little more informal. Oh, it would be totally informal. Yeah. Because so, we would not, I was just being diplomatic. We would we would have our we would have our board in Vernon, okay. but no no board per okay. presence. That okay. answers my question. Thank you. So my other one, uh, this is for you, Mr. Hebert. Um, you were talking about contracting, which I get. I mean, that's <coughs> sort of at the heart of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. That you're a landlocked town, that you don't have other neighbors you can go work with. So you're you're kind of part of this historically, culturally, but you're trying to not be part of it. So you referred to contracting services right. from the new unified school district. Would that include special education services? It would be what we negotiate, but I, I would anticipate, yes. That so it you would may be. not be hiring special educators yourself, but hoping to hire through contracted services from the unified Right, we would want to contract for the services we presently, presently receive from the SU to contract for those same services. Okay. okay, so this one I, might be easy because it's a follow-up on yours, Ken. Um, that sort of answered my question from uh, about the finances, but I want to just, as I was dri driving around today trying to think of this question, I came up with this analogy, and just shoot it down if it's totally wrong. But if uh, there are other unions that get dissolved in our society, so if two people own the house, and they decided to go different ways, one might say, it's a wash, the assets I'm leaving in the attic and the cellar and the furniture, 
to what I still owe on the mortgage, so let's call it a wash, I'll see you later. The person staying behind has those assets, but it hasn't reduced their mortgage at all. We do have, don't we still have some monthly payments that we make in the school district on work that's been done that we, that Vernon currently is helping to pay to uh, their portion of that debt. You get my question? Yes, yeah. both the assessments that they are paying now, and instead of the assessments, their alimony would be tuition. So here's here's my last one. And it it gets back to your comment, Anne, about just Act 46. Um, I mean this is an important vote to move forward with the merger. I mean without this vote, I mean this is a necessary step to get to the merger vote. And because of that, I have met people who have talked to me who are talking about voting no on this with no ill will toward Vernon, but simply as a way to voice their opposition to where we've come to on Act 46. So my question is, what will happen to the Act 46 process here in this corner of the world if this vote is a no vote on Tuesday? I'm just curious what the next steps would be where, where would we go from there? That's it. If you can answer that, I won't stand up. Oh, I, 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 well, can I can attempt to answer that. I think it's an incorrect assumption to assume that a no vote on Tuesday is going to stop the... I didn't say stop. Well, it's going to... That's why I'm asking what it would do. I'm not saying what it will do. I'm <laughs> asking you what it will do if the vote doesn't pass in one of the five towns. Well, it, it, what, what, it, what it does, it doesn't allow Vernon to pursue its own options. And uh, it, it's, in my mind, it's not respectful to that community's request to pursue uh, its tradition, uh, maintenance of, maintain, yeah, maintenance of its tradition of school choice. Sure. So but what will it do to the Act 4? What will be the next step at the Act 46 study group if it doesn't pass? That's all I'm asking. So chances are the the towns which voted it down would probably some members of that town would ask for a reconsideration of the vote in that town. It might I, I don't know I one wouldn't um, swear on that but but chances are that that might happen and they would have a very tight turnaround time to bring that vote back to their citizens. If if ultimately it did not. Uh, uh, wasn't a positive vote in all of the towns, it puts our communities in a pretty awkward situation because right now the law is the law and we would um, hit July 17th very quickly and as you probably are aware, the law has pretty clear guidelines, uh, deadlines. We, we missed one um, when Vernon pulled out of the process, which was back last year, in July 17th, we hit another one. So in, in July, our districts, and, and Frank Rucker could expand on this, but there would be real financial consequences. Chances are good that based on all the considerations that are coming to the concerns from the public that have been coming to our study committee, the act <coughs> will not change to the degree um, would not address the concerns people are bringing. So the study committee has acknowledged that. Um, and because of that, um, we still have this, uh, we still have to comply. And the only way we can really comply is by merging. Um, so we do not have, uh, I hesitate to speak for all of us, but the consensus has been that this was the most, really the only way for these towns to merge and to comply, again, with the law as it is written right now. I would ask that, yeah. Let me say something. You had mentioned the fact that there may be people out there who would vote negatively against Vernon leaving as a way of voicing their displeasure at Act 46. I would contend that that effort and voicing displeasure would be better served if they picked up a pencil and paper and wrote a letter to their representatives. 
let them be the one who are going to be reviewing Act 46. To, to vote against this is rather picky, and it, it does not make a lot of sense. If they have that big of an objection, let them voice it to the people who wrote the law and who are capable of changing that law. But the other part of it is, too, that if, Let's if, if, if Vernon goes through, uh, if we say yes and let Vernon go, go, we still all vote on the merger. People still get a vote on that merger in March. I so, so that other part, I, I just throw out for myself personally, the option is always in the back of my head that we can, as a study committee, we can put Vernon back in and we can have that vote for a merger without respecting what Vernon has asked us to do. That, that's, that's a possibility as well. When you ask what will happen, we don't know what's going to happen because we haven't had that conversation. Yeah. But, but we, do, uh, we do have a pretty good understanding of the law and we're not, um, we're not, we're choosing not to gamble with, with the future. Um, Ian and then Mikey, Ian Tori. Um, as, as someone who opposes merger, has been very vocal about that. I hear that a lot. Uh, and I urge people to look at these as two separate things. Vernon's choice is at risk, whether we merge or not. Um, so it's really not fair to Vernon to use them as a pawn like that. Um, let's let our friends in Vernon get their, um, get their safety. And we vote down the merger in March, we can do that. So that's to, too glad to for that. To go to your question of what would happen from Vernon's perspective, uh, we have discussed this course of action with our select board and our school board has discussed it at length. Uh, we did not take lightly removing ourselves from the process. Um, what would happen, uh, as I'm fairly certain, is that we would file a suit and it would just uh, be, one, a waste of a lot of money, a lot of taxpayer money. Uh, and it would do exactly what Vernon hoped not to do. When Vernon decided to withdraw, one of the things that we said is, we do not want to stop the other towns from doing what they think is in the best interest of their towns. So if they believe merger to be in their best interest, allow that to move forward. As Vernon believes that keeping school choice is in the best interest of our town, please let us move forward with that. And then, regardless of what happens with the merger vote, as Ian said, those are two separate issues, Vernon would then be free to contract with the new merged entity, whatever transpired after that. We would have the option to go along with whatever that new entity is and to petition the state to allow us to contract. Uh, one of the other options available to Vernon if we were out <coughs> is there are not geographic considerations to Act 46. So you can come up with a funky district. One of the things in Act 46 what it says is two light districts can merge. Well, our light districts are Dover, Jamaica, Wardsboro. I mean, we would have this district that was this <laughs> odd configuration that would I don't know, Ron, would you want to be superintendent in a district like that? Probably not. <laughs> so it's, it's really not practical. The most practical thing for us is to have people vote us out, allow the other towns to move forward with their desires, and whatever, whatever their individual voters believe is in the best interest of their town, let them make that choice. Let each individual town make their choices. And then, when it's all said and done and, and the new entity comes into place, Vernon then works with the supervisor unit or it's, what is the name? Whatever the new name would be. It's got a long name. Right. That new entity, we would work with the new entity to draw up the necessary agreements to continue our relationship with the SU. And it would be a contract of service. So if we're paying a million dollars now for those services, we would anticipate we would continue to pay a million dollars for the same services. Just as when you were asking about assessment tuition, well, our assessment is based on the student population we have at the high school. 
our tuition would be based on the student population of the high school. So it, that's where things like the Washington. But you would be your own school district. Yes. In the Act 46, wasn't there originally a target, a minimum, it was like 900 students in a school district? But that's not a hard and fast rule. You could have a school district with one town. Well, that, that's some of what's going to be debated and, and asked with that. When we're allowed to, to, to contract, that would be one of the things, would you give us permission to do that? All those things have to be identified and addressed. Again, that's one of the bills that will probably come up this year is addressing those kind of relationships. I know one of the bills for certain is going to be, right now, it has to be two or more towns to be a side-by-side. -side. There is legislation that will be filed that will allow one town to be a side-by-side -side to a, a district without those restrictions. So what would happen is, if that were the case, if that were the pass this year, Vernon would then say, we would like to be a side-by-side -side to the new district. But the 900 is in the current legislation. Yes. It is, but that's yes. one of the things that is going to be uh, looked at this year. We, and we have no idea what's, what's going to be voted in May. But we do have to remember for the last 18 months, not much has changed on Act 46. And that's been very evident to the study committee. Right. And part, of, part of the problem was there were, there were at least 18 bills that would have modified Act 46, but the chair of the committee never let them be discussed in committee. So you had an entire year where there was no action, no, subs no substantive action on Act 46 with the exception of one, one part on thresholds. But other than that, there was no discussion to modify Act 46. That attitude has changed tremendously, especially over the summer. So. Well, we'll, we'll see. We don't know. Um, we're maybe with, uh, I was that just thinking maybe one more question for somebody who hasn't asked yet. Hi, I'm Franz Reichsman. Um, I'm a town meeting representative and on the finance committee. Um, so I have a couple of things. Um, I think I get it that the tuition would offset the loss in money coming from the state. And I assume there's some mechanism by which that would be a similar amount of money in both hands there. Um, I'm not as clear on the, um, the debt that's still owed and the assets that are in place to compensate for that debt. And my question is, is there some reason that those are approximately the same amount, or is that just a happy accident <coughs> that enables this to go forward? And I guess pursuant to that, um, are there some actual numbers with, that would, some calculations that show that those are, in fact, close enough that we're going to ignore any difference that's contained there. Frank, I think Frank addressed part of that again, but maybe you can give him some more specific mm -hmm. numbers. Well, can, I just, right. can I just make one point on that? Um, the money that we're paying for that debt is part of the overall school budget, which is funded by the money that each town is paying in. So Vernon is still paying their share of that by the money that they're tuitioning in because they're still putting in the same amount of money. So that right there is, I, I think, the answer to the question. The mailing said there was this amount in assets and this amount in debt, and those were the same amount. If you're going to say that, there's got to be a number, or it may just be zero-based accounting. The, the, the payments aren't going to go, uh, the payments are going to be the same. There's going to be one less person making payments. To the but no, they are still making payments. But, but they, assuming they send the same amount of people. Yes. If they decide to send half of their people elsewhere, well, let's have, let's have Frank portion Frank of the payment would go up. Can, can I respond to that? Yeah. We don't decide. Right. where the students are going to go. The parents decide. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. And historically, for the last 50 years, 80% of the students, 75 to 80% of students have gone to Brown. There is no reason to expect that that would change. Oh, right. So our payments to the school would remain the same as Ian said. It's based on student population, what you're going to pay. So we would be paying into the school, which includes the debt service. 
Does that answer that question enough, or do you want Frank to speak? I think so, but I'd like to hear if Frank has a quick summary. So, so as I was saying, no, it's certainly not my position. It's it's uh, the position that the, the two boards agreed to with the advice of the bond council, Paul Giuliani, uh, and it, and it, again, it goes back to this sense that you could get a formula, you could get an assessment, uh, but in his estimation, because you're not going, it's unrealistic to sell the Brattleboro Union High School and convert that calculation into some sort of an actual transaction. It, it's not. It's not worth having the debate about the uh, the, the, the valuations between uh, debt that is being paid, as Ian has just said, <coughs> debt is going to be paid in, on a continuing basis into the future. So, so as far as some sort of an imminent liability, it's it's being addressed as uh, time goes on through the tuition payment. You know, a $14,000 tuition payment is going to cover, as Ian is saying, the Bradbury Union High School operating costs, which includes debt. So, so again, in terms of evaluation and, and an attempt to say, uh, if we sold the high school, we have a fair exchange of assets for versus the current liability, the bond council is saying it's it, it's not worth defining it any any further than this general, as we as I referred to earlier. You can go to the audit report, you can see the capital assets of Bradbury Union High School, forty one million, and you will see in that audit report that the debt will be eleven million if this mer merger goes forward. And if you want to do a proportional share of assets versus liability, you you, you can. You can come up with those numbers, uh, and they are 11% is the current uh, proportion of Vernon to VHS, so that's 11% of 4 million is about 4 million, and 11% of 11 million is about 1 million. So if you if you want to come to those sort of valuations, you can, but the probability of uh, that being put into some sort of a transaction, which is the purpose of of uh, you know doing that evaluation is not it's not meaningful. So the the risk potential risk to the taxpayers of Brattleboro would be if for some reason parents in Vernon all decided we we don't like your high school anymore we're sending our kids elsewhere and then we'd still be on the hook for the debt service um, but then on the other hand we'd own more of the high school for whatever good that was. And, and then I can say too Frank and right now. If, the, if this vote goes through, Vernon is still going to be paying in, as Ian pointed out, and Brattle, as Brattleboro residents, we are going to own more of the high school. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when that came to us, that's one of the things that I thought of, is that if, if we were going to turn around and sell all the assets tomorrow, right now we have to divide it five ways. If Vernon gets, re if Vernon gets released from BUHS number six, then we divide those assets four ways. Got but, but another another key point is that could happen without this vote, right? Vernon has that choice. If they exercise that choice, then there, you know, there, there would be the consequence of a, uh, you know, of this significant change in cost for students. So then, of course, you have to look at the programs and so on. So you know, that, that, that hypothetical is, um, you know, not that useful as well. I think there was one more question by you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, just two quick questions. Is the town of Vernon the only one in the entire state of Vermont that has no charter that they have school choice? Yes. They're the only one in the entire state of Vermont. <laughs> but we're, 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 we're the only one that has a is a member of a union high school that also has school choice. But there may well be others in their charters that have school choice in their school charter but we our uniqueness is that we belong to a union high school yet we have school choice and the second part is act 46 is is just another different funding mechanism is that what we're really talking about taxes the cost to taxpayers that this these mergers we're talking about is somehow going to be more cost effective 
So my understanding of Act 46, when they started to talk about it, and I think the best person to answer would probably be a legislator that was on the Education Committee, but those that I've talked to that have talked about this, there were two concerns that they're looking at, uh, of many. The current system of funding is very unsustainable. We have a declining student population. We have an aging population that pays the taxes. And we have a system that kind of um, separates us from knowing exactly what we are paying in. Because all of us pass our budgets on what we think. This conversation came up at, at, at our last town representative meeting in March. And then we send it up to the state, and the state gets that from everybody. And we, then they decide, well, the tax rate will be this for everybody. All of us in the supervisory union, all of us are receiving town. As a matter of fact, I saw somewhere, I guess everybody in the state is a receiving town. Mm -hmm. So basically everybody, when we stand, I've heard people say that, well, we pay for our kids because we care about our kids. Yeah, well, we all do. Through the whole state, we all do. And we all send money up and then it all comes back down in a more equitable fashion because there's some places like Mount Snow that bring in a lot of money in comparison to little towns like just the town of Dover on its own. The other big question that was out there is equity. Is it the same thing that's being given to a child in each town, in the neighboring town? We have found inequities when we look at it in our over a thousand hours of, of uh, study committee discussions. There are larger inequities that I've heard about from other parts of the state. And when the legislators heard about that, that it was another attempt to do, I think, both of these things with Act 46. And part of what we're required to do, the largest part, and the part that we keep coming back to, is this is about the educational equity for our children and what we're able to give to our children. So we've spent a lot of our time looking at programs and what we're giving and what we are able to do and the problems that come when you have caps and you have a, a smaller population and how you can spread that out if you're in a larger population. So Act 46 has attempted to do that. It also forces, um, there was a consolidation of special education that was forced upon us three years ago, two years ago, that was not something that the administrators were very thrilled about, but it resulted in $300,000 worth of direct savings in our supervisory unit immediately. And it's because of being able to share so we, we certainly have more discussions for you and times to come out. Alice and I, hopefully some point soon, we'll be making some sort of a video so you can just go to a website and look at it and not have to come and spend your time in the evenings with us, although we're gratified that you're all here. Um, but And that would be on Act 46 in general. Tonight we really wanted to focus on Vernon and the questions on Vernon. Um, if there's anybody who hasn't asked a question, I wanted to make sure I get those first. Could I just uh, add to your point? John? Yes. I would, I would ask you, look at the WSESU website. Um, there's a section on Act 46. It'll have the latest report. And then in the addendum, it'll have um, a review of the program opportunities that we did a, a very thorough analysis. And you know, we know in some of our smaller districts, we don't have the equity of programming that other larger districts are able to afford, like Brattleboro Town versus Guilford or Fort Vernon. Um, we also did a projection of some of those opportunities. Um, and as, as Jill said, we didn't expect to save $300,000 with the um, consolidation of special ed, but because we could utilize staffing more efficiently, we actually were able to train our paraeducators as behavioral technicians, um, and you know it's worked out really well. I believe we provide better services throughout the whole SU than we did previously. That's what we're looking at in terms of the, this merger. So with that, I think we could, did you have something more quick? Yeah, actually, um, again, it's, it's Vernon's request to be allowed out of, the, out of the merger. Alice may well be right. There may be no changes to Act 46. I do know at least four members of the Ed Committee that want to change Act 46. There's some leading legislators, legislators that want to change Act 46, and also the incoming administration wants to change Act 46. 
So the potential for change is great, but Vernon does not want to put its, its ability to have school choice in a basket that says, okay, if changes are made, you can keep your school choice. We're asking people, please let us out, and if there are changes that allow Vernon to get back in, by all means, we'll get back in. But for those of us that have been in Montpelier, um, you can never bet on what's gonna come out in May. What starts in January may not be what happens in May. And like I said, there's a significant number of people that wanna change Act 46. Does not mean it's going to change. So we need to make our decisions and judgments on based on what we have today, not what may potentially happen. And that's what we're asking. We're asking for the other towns to please allow us to strike out on our own and to pursue the course of action that we've been working with the study committee and the WSSU uh, that we feel would be in the best interest of the taxpayers and residents and students of Vernon. So I, there's two people who have spoken before. Maybe we can take your questions afterwards privately and let everybody else one go. Okay. And that is, we've heard a lot about Act 46, and you were just speaking, maybe it'll change, maybe it won't. I just want to say that we are voting next week on the Vernon issue, but we are not voting on Act 46. In March, we are voting on the particular plan of this district. Exactly. And we, the gentleman over here said, if you don't like such and such, you should talk to your representative. That's not what we're doing. We're voting on this particular plan. Right, so the only question in front of us at the moment, and that was a discussion we had to, to split it, and we felt like that was a better way to give it to the voters so people could do the two parts. And so we have this wonderfully unfortunate timing of next week in the middle of December, but that was mandated by the statutes of how that fell apart or falls, falls after the August vote that they did in, in Vernon. So thank you all for coming out. It's December, it's cold, mm -hmm. and there's lots going on. So gratified that you're also interested. Please speak to your neighbors. Check out the things on the website and vote on Tuesday. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. They all accept the motion. So thank you. All those in favor. Thank you.